Hating Ten and Rose isn't a hot take. Now, this isn't just because it's a grievance I don't share. This doesn't annoy me as a fan of the characters. It annoys me as a verified pedant. Anyone with a set of eyeballs should be able to see that Ten and Rose have been in the doghouse for years. If you want to voice your distaste for these two online, that's fine. You're allowed to not like things. Just stop acting like you're going to get twatted by a mob for it. It's not the 2000s anymore. Or so I keep telling myself. To be clear, I'm not about to argue Ten and Rose are great actually, and if you disagree, you smell of poo. If a majority of people take issue with something, there usually is some kind of problem, or at the very least, a reasonable explanation. So I reached out to the denizens of Twitter.com a while back and did some research. Here is some of the reasoning I found. Too puppyish, too simple, basic, we prefer Nine and Rose, no challenge, quite static. So now that I've heard you all out in a pretense of reasonableness, I'm going to mansplain your feelings back to you. Firstly, is it possible that Ten and Rose are damned by association? Series 2 has Idiot's Lantern, Love and Monsters, and Fear Her, combined with a Cyberman reboot, which gets varied responses depending on who you ask, some people's grievances with School Reunion and Girl in the Fireplace. So there are a lot of asterisks with Series 2. Asterisks I largely don't share, I even think Series 2 is pretty good, but I understand that if it's just not your series, the TARDIS team will be somewhat tarnished for you. That's probably a factor with Levin, Clara, and Ruby. But while it's one explanation, it can't be the whole truth. Doctors and Companions have been liked in disliked runs before, and vice versa. I will leave the comments sections to work out which ones I'm talking about. So let's talk about No Challenge, or Puppy-ish. Because this is one I think I agree with, or at least I understand that the perspective has basis. The point becomes clear when you compare 10 and rows to 9 and rows, or specifically 9 to 10. The Ninth Doctor came out of a war with a big picture mentality. He won't take ordinary people's lives as seriously as whatever problem he's dealing with at the moment. He decries the domestic, and doesn't want to get sucked into Rose's world any more than he has to. There's a bit of wistfulness over a life he never had, but at this point in time, it's more of a curiosity, closer in line with how Seven felt towards them. Then immediately after that, we get Ten, who rocks up for Christmas dinner. Some of you keenly-eyed viewers may have picked up on the fact that RTD has done this twice again since coming back. He differentiates 14 from 10, and to some extent 13, by making him more open and willing to admit that he loves people. Then he does that again with Shooty and Tenon, initially differentiating the later version from the predecessor by making them more emotionally healthy. But then, psych! You can only be so emotionally healthy before you stop being a viable RTD protagonist. If series 1 was all about Rose being pulled into the Doctor's world, then perhaps series 2 is about the Doctor being pulled into Rose's world. And because of the series 1 character development and the fact that regeneration tends to shake up the personality somewhat, Ten takes to the notion of domesticity, of sitting around and having a life on Earth, as much as Rose took to space adventures. This makes Doomsday a delicious irony because neither of them truly gets what they want. Rose is trapped on one planet, Ten is detached from his anchor, his connection. Technology using the one thing a Dalek can't do. Touch. Seal inside your casing. Not feeling anything, ever. From birth to death, locked inside a cold metal cage. Completely alone. You're lonely, aren't you, Doctor? I mean, Dalek. So yeah. That's why I appreciate Ten and Rose, and why I find Series 2 one of the more thematically interesting series, and certainly of RTD1. But what are they like as a viewing experience from episode to episode? How many times do, say, Nine and Rose have an argument? How many episodes? Rose, End of the World, Unquiet Dead, Dalek, Father's Day, Pying of the Ways. Okay, and how many times do Ten and Rose have a disagreement? Well, the school reunion, Rise of the Cybermen, and, uh, Doomsday. So you can see what people mean when they say puppyish or more static. Now, on the one hand, it makes sense to put Ten and Rose in a state of grace before 
the big split up at the end of this series happens. But at the same time, as an audience, we're looking for conflict. Nine and Rose weren't unbearable to be around, despite all the times they argued. Series 1 manages to find the perfect balance. This also gives us a chance to talk about external conflict. There's generally less of this in Series 2 as well. For instance, Jackie and Mickey were really suspicious of the Doctor in Series 1, but in Series 2, they're largely cool with him. Again, this fits with Ten becoming more comfortable with his hub, and the people in his life becoming more comfortable with him. Ten and Rose get separated a fair bit, especially in the latter half of Series 2, which Rose lampshades. <laughs> You know what, they keep on trying to split us up, but they never ever will. The recurring motif of separation across a great physical distance, like in Age of Steel, Girl in the Fireplace, the foreshadows, obviously, them getting split up into different dimensions at the end of Doomsday. Perhaps that's what you need to do with a static dynamic. Though admittedly, that's also a one-trick pony, and it didn't rescue Fear Her. The finale does it permanently, and we're left to reminisce on how great Tenor Rose used to be. They work very well in retrospect, as something to be nostalgic for. So there's an arguable shift from internal to external conflict, from series 1 to series 2. They clash less, but they're often in danger of being split up physically, kind of like 12 and Clara from series 8 to series 9. Clara and 12 argue a lot less in series 9, but they're split up very often resulting in the hybrid. It becomes internal once again, once Clara makes it clear that they can't go on like this. One strength, obviously, that Twelve and Clara have over Ten and Rose is that they retained the actor from both series. So as a viewing experience, it feels more like progress, rather than replacing one quite complicated dynamic with something slightly more static. I don't really have a conclusion to this other than I quite like what Series 2 is going for. I like what Ten and Rose do thematically for the show and Ten's art going forward. But I also get why people have the criticisms of it. But then again, having a Doctor and Companion be in a state of grace, especially in the revival, is you know, quite rare. And can make for a nice change of pace if you're burnt out on the power disparity dynamics between the Doctor and the Companion that a lot of the series since have really delved into.